Hey everyone, Noah Zerbe here. This is one of a series of short videos introducing key concepts in international political economy. In this video, we're going to explore the General Agreement on Tariffs and Trade, or GATT, the precursor organization to the World Trade Organization. So let's get started. The World Trade Organization's historical roots lie in the General Agreement on Tariffs and Trade, or GATT. At the end of World War II, Negotiations at the Bretton Woods Conference established the World Bank and the International Monetary Fund. That's why these organizations are often referred to as the Bretton Woods Institutions. At the same time, it envisioned a third organization, dubbed the International Trade Organization, or ITO, that would be established alongside the other two. But as negotiations on establishing the ITO dragged on, the United States and seven other countries, the United Kingdom, Canada, Australia, France, Belgium, the Netherlands, and Luxembourg, moved forward on another less formal group, the General Agreement on Tariffs and Trade. Negotiations on the International Trade Organization continued until 1950, when a final agreement was reached. However, U.S. President Harry Truman announced that he would not submit the ITO treaty to the U.S. Senate for ratification, and the United States would not seek membership in the organization. U.S. opposition to the treaty centered on the possible impact the agreement would have on domestic economic policy. With the withdrawal of the United States from the ITO process, the organization was doomed to fail, and no other states would approve the treaty. As the only multilateral institution dealing with trade issues, the GATT became the natural forum for countries to discuss trade disputes and to negotiate multilateral agreements. As a result, membership in GATT quickly expanded from the original eight members in 1947 to 123 by the time the agreement concluded in 1994. To be clear, GATT was not a formal organization. It had no headquarters, no permanent staff, or any of the other kinds of markers we normally associate with international organizations. Rather, it was an umbrella agreement to govern international trade talks. The GATT was comprised of eight successive rounds of trade talks, which successfully liberalized international trade, largely by cutting tariffs on a broader and broader array of goods. Remember that a tariff is a tax placed on a good imported into a country. Tariffs increase the price of imports, usually reducing demand for those goods. While ostensibly used to raise revenue for the government, often they're used to discourage consumption of imported goods and to promote demand for domestically produced goods instead. But economists are generally very critical of tariffs as they undermine the functioning of comparative advantage, reduce efficiency, and prevent the development of closer economic ties between countries. So the primary purpose of the GATT was to reduce tariffs. The first round, dubbed the Geneva Round, took place in 1947 and involved 23 countries. The final agreement reduced tariffs on more than 45,000 goods, affecting some $10 billion worth of trade. The next four rounds continued to liberalize international trade by reducing tariffs on a wider and wider array of goods. But beginning in 1964 with the Kennedy Round, the focus of GATT's work began to broaden beyond a narrow focus on reducing tariffs. While negotiations continued to reduce tariffs and liberalize international trade, negotiations after 1964 expanded the scope of negotiations into new areas. The 1964 Kennedy Round addressed the problem of dumping. In international trade, dumping refers to selling goods below normal prices, often below the cost of production, in an effort to damage the economy of the recipient country. Dumping is often an attempt to drive out competition in order to later establish a monopoly. The Kennedy Round addressed dumping by permitting countries to take measures to prevent it. The Tokyo Round concluded in 1979. It saw a dramatic increase in the number of countries participating in the GATT, from 48 in the Kennedy Round to 102 in the Tokyo Round. In addition to continuing to reduce tariffs, the Tokyo Round, for the first time in the history of GATT, dealt not just with tariffs but with non-tariff barriers to trade. We've already defined tariffs, but what are non-tariff barriers? Put simply, non-tariff barriers to trade are any measure used by states to restrict imports. These may be quotas, which are numerical limits on imports. They could be sanitary or phytosanitary measures intended to protect public health and safety, technical barriers, uh, or even intentional delays in customs, uh, or a whole host of other measures. The Tokyo Round took the first steps in establishing common understandings and policy frameworks to address non-tariff barriers among GATT signatories. The final round, and by far the most complex round of GATT talks, was the Uruguay Round concluded in 1994. 
The Uruguay round involved 123 countries and focused on a wide variety of issues beyond reducing tariffs. The Uruguay round addressed intellectual property rights, uh, agricultural subsidies, non-tariff barriers, trades and services, and established a dispute settlement mechanism to resolve trade disputes and prevent trade wars. But perhaps the most significant outcome of the Uruguay round was the agreement to establish the World Trade Organization, or WTO. The GATT proved to be a dramatic success in reducing tariffs. At the start of the GATT in 1947, the average tariff rates amongst its signatories was 22%. By the time the Uruguay round concluded in 1994, the average tariff rate was just 5%. Further, the number of signatories to the agreement had increased from just 8 to 123, representing more than 80% of global trade. GATT increased transparency in international trade rules and helped to rationalize trade barriers. And over time, the total value of international trade skyrocketed, from about $60 billion when the GATT was founded to about $5.1 trillion when it transitioned into the GATT in 1995 and on to nearly $20 trillion today. The success of the GATT and the successful conclusion of the Uruguay Round in 1994 set the stage for the establishment of the World Trade Organization in 1995. We'll deal with that in our next video. So thanks for watching. Have a good day. Bye.